that's me. Bet you're wondering how I got into this crazy situation. Well, it's not exactly a long story. It takes about a year. This episode of Hey, Let Me Tell You About is Hey, Let Me Tell You About How I'm Living in Japan Right Now and I'm Actually a Character in a Manga and other tidbits of information. Also, it's just it's it's just called Let Me Tell You About. Oh, there's no hey? But how are you supposed to... There's no hey. It's just let me tell you How are you going to grab their attention if there's no hey? Well, I can probably change the periods to exclamation That's points. Good. That might be too intensive. Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot. This is this is Deadeye again, right? Yep, this is oh. Deadeye. As you may recall, from Neopets. And I think you were on the Shadow Run episode. A little bit. The, the infamous Neopets episode, which I did not expect to be that popular. I don't think anyone That's did. That's crazy. After all, it's fucking Neopets. Yeah, so I guess the... Uh... The way this episode's got to start is by telling you that I'm literally living in Japan right now, and that may be of interest to, to the weeb audience of this uh, this podcast. <laughs> it's so small in that apartment, you can hear him pee. Yeah, I mean, it's great. I can get up, walk around my entire apartment with just my headphone cable, and never really have to leave my computer, which is great. But... uh I mean, I do this. I do the same thing essentially. The, the, this whole story, be, there's many twists and many turns, many master plans hatched, and ridiculous happenings. But uh, it all it all starts back after I came home from my first study abroad from Japan. Like, we'll do another episode of just Jap 101 stories with my brother. <laughs> there's some. There's some real fucking characters. Characters is is putting it mildly. If anyone's listening to this who's thinking, hey, I like Japanese cartoons, I might want to learn Japanese one day. Don't. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> There's Nothing good can come of it. My entire life is one big outlier. Like, and that, that outlier <laughs> has ended up with me living in a tiny apartment, so that's, that's the best you can expect. <laughs> like, Japanese classes is, is a hellhole, and you will not enjoy your time there. But uh, we're gonna skip my undergraduate, uh, my undergraduate blunder years, and go right back to uh, when blunder I when years. I first got home from from study abroad and graduated from college. Cause I'm an old man now, and uh, when when I when I got back from study abroad, I, I stepped off the plane from Tokyo to uh, Columbus, Ohio, and <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine like. The sinking feeling I got in my heart that was just, oh, oh, I'm back in Ohio now. And I had no <laughs> way to rectify this situation. It's literally just like, oh, oh, this is this is back to my life now. Because... I mean, Ohio kind of sounds like a Japanese word. It, it literally is a Japanese word. It means good morning. Well, there Which we go. Which is why every time you meet a Japanese person and you say, hey, I'm from Ohio, they go... Like the word "good morning," ha ha pun joke. <laughs> I bet that no, it's not old. old ever. Never, never, never old. It got old. It got old the first time I heard it. <laughs> no, the the reason that there's a Ohio is well known is there's a big Honda plant in Colum outside of Columbus, and I actually worked for a company for a little bit that did uh, some business with them. But that's part of the story that comes later. Uh, so I got off. I got off the plane. I go back to my parents' house because, you know, I don't have anywhere to live. And they're like, hey, so when are you getting a job? One, one week <laughs> after I got home, well, my dad, uh, my dad takes me, sits me down, and he's like, we need to have a serious discussion. When are you getting a job? I was like, I have not finished unpacking yet. <laughs> like, thanks, thanks for the, the vote of confidence there. So I started looking for jobs. <laughs> and surprisingly, you know, it, it wasn't that hard to, to find one initially. I worked at a... Uh, 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 a factory that makes rails that they use in engineering. Didn't your, like, dad own the factory or work there or no. something? No, no. You fucking cheater. He didn't actually have anything to do with it, surprisingly enough. They make uh, rails that they use in industrial equipment, and it was the most boring job ever. I swear, I, like, blinked <laughs> and two months went by. It was, like, living just the same thing over and over, and I really, really wanted to die. So I started looking up, like, uh... This is the first, the first big story is how I got this scholarship to come over here. It's, uh, I won't, I won't name the scholarship in case I get in trouble for being on this podcast. <laughs> uh, it, it, this podcast is of ill report. Right? <laughs> like, oh. I won't deny it. 
Oh, he was on that podcast, the one with dragon dildos? No, uh-uh. Not giving him <laughs> At money. Christmas. I went, it, this is being recorded on Christmas Eve. Oh, I guess Christmas Day at 2.30 a.m. I don't know. It's probably like the 28th for you or something. No, it's Christmas Day, 5.30 p.m. <laughs> I don't have Jeez. anything better to do on Christmas than record this podcast. Another tip for listeners. You know. <laughs> like, I had, I had my business cards with me, and I went to visit my grandparents to eat, like, ham and shit. And I handed them out to everyone except my grandparents because I don't want them to listen to this. They don't want them to if know. You, if you go to the link, the first episode is unintentional gay homestuck role playing. <laughs> and my grandma asked me during dinner, "So, how is your boyfriend Alex doing?" <laughs> I'm not adding any more fuel to this fucking fire. As if it needs any more. Wait, are you telling me you and Ga- Alex are not gay? Because <laughs> that's news to me. I'm not gay. Okay, whatever you say. I've then. been so. <laughs> I have had so. All right, I have had eight friends turn on me and be like, "Yo, are you gay?" Or, like, try to hit on me. It's literally the worst. It's, it's, you put out an aura. I guess I exude, like, a, a fuck... I don't I don't want to fucking talk about it. <laughs> no no need for words now. <laughs> I can feel your fucking it, It's slime. an intense smolder. A gaze. I can feel it all the way to the other side of the fucking globe. I mean, that is pretty cool that, you know, I'm pretty much literally as physically far, far away as possible physically from you on this planet. And I can still talk to you about Homestuck. <laughs> you can't get away. For the record, so that viewers know, I, I know nothing about Homestuck. Don't lump me in with these people. <laughs> I know about Japanese anime, which is much more respectable. So getting, right. back, getting yeah. back to my uh, my story is working at this soul-crushing job. I was basically like a translator slash interpreter, but I really didn't do much. So I looked up this scholarship. It starts with an M. And ends with an EXT. And that's literally the name of the scholarship. So Oh, it's just called Next. Yeah, it's just called the Next. I don't really care if people know. It, it's a good <laughs> scholarship. Like, I highly recommend anybody who's actually doing, like, serious aside. If you're actually looking to go to Japan on scholarship and you have some academic chops, look up the Next scholarship. It's awesome. But, uh, so I, I looked that up and I started the process for signing up for it, all that. I did some really basic research. Because I I looked online at what you really need to do for it, and it's pretty vague. You know, there were a couple of people who won before, and they tell you, hey, they're going to tear your your, uh, research a new one. You better be able to defend it. So I I prepared what I thought was a reasonable amount of research, about three pages on, uh, what was it, Japanese and American business relations and how they can be strengthened through, uh, through an understanding of culture and translation. Really, really basic stuff. It was basically just like, hey, uh, I want to go to Japan. Here's a bullshit reason for me to go to Japan. <laughs> and so the uh, what happened was there was all sorts of weird drama and shit at work that was basically led to me getting almost getting a manager fired for lying about orders on the on the uh, shop floor. Oh, yeah. They decided that they weren't hitting their numbers for uh, for production orders enough. And I was the one who found out about it because I was responsible for putting in the numbers at the end of the day. And I did what I thought was the responsible thing was and uh, told my one of my Japanese supervisors, but apparently I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> so he almost got fired, and they didn't like working with me anymore. So you I started to the line, my friend. Well, yeah, but see, I was fresh off the boat from college. I was like, I will be a good worker and do my job like, <laughs> to the best of my ability, which is the wrong attitude to have. So uh, I was looking for a new job, and it just happened to coincide with this trip that I have to take to Detroit. Oh. Yeah, yeah to, to Detroit to do this. Uh, I, I got the, uh, the email back that my, uh, my research had been accepted for preliminary evaluation, and there's a, a test and an interview part in Detroit, half Japanese, half English, for both sections. So it, it worked out pretty well that I got to quit my job, and I had another one lined up with space to go to Detroit in between it. And uh, I, I drove up to Detroit from Columbus, which is like, I think it was like a three-hour drive, so it wasn't that bad. Stayed at the hotel at the consulate and, you know, tried to avoid the war zone going on outside. <laughs> Driving into Detroit is terrifying. The traffic is insane. The gunshots are endless. <laughs> there were actual gunshots as you were stuck in traffic? There weren't not gunshots. <laughs> So th- this is where the story gets juicy, though. So I get there, and, you know, there's only... Th- 
number one, I got there during the middle of a uh, a what do you call it? Like uh, a snowstorm? No, not a snowstorm. It was in summer, but uh, a sunstorm. An all an all USA black preacher convention. <laughs> I'm not. Right. This was the most surreal thing I've ever experienced. There's literally like gospel music and crooning going on in the lobby at all times. And these dudes. And I at first I thought it was a pimp <laughs> convention because they were wearing like <laughs> lavender suits and shit. And I was like going this, to pimp con. This is not a real thing, but it was a real thing. It was like the all all USA Black Southern Baptist preacher convention, which is a thing that exists. So. The, the, Detroit the is probably the only place that could take place. I mean, the air of this of the consulate, it was like a big meeting hall that also had the consulate in it, was odd, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, there's like gospel music going on all the time, like just, you know, Bible thumping and stuff. It, it was weird. So I, I go to sleep and I get up for the day of the thing and I show up. I, I brought a suit because I wanted to be fancy. I figure a suit is appropriate if you're going to meet, like, the Japanese consulate. And I bring Mm -hmm. my research, which is, like, three pages. I I thought three was enough. And I get in and I meet some of the other applicants. Uh, There's two two Chinese applicants, and they already know all the damn kanji, which isn't fair. Uh, (laughs) And two American applicants. And we're all sitting around talking, sizing each other up, obviously, because only one person gets to win. That's the thing. There are six of us in only one spot. And uh, everybody's talking about their research, and they pull out these big, stapled folders. So one of the applicants of, of the, the, two, the two who are non-Chinese, so you can write the Chinese two off because they're just like, hey, we, we, we know all kanji ever, and they get to cheat <laughs> like that. It's not fair. It's not fair in the slightest. It's total bullshit. <laughs> they grow up learning like 20,000 characters, and like, yeah, maybe use like... 2,000 of them for Japanese. It's more complicated than that, but that's how I feel about it. Um, <laughs> one of these people, uh, right before we go into the, the interview process, uh, we were comparing our, our uh, research notes, and I, I got a look at, at their research. 25 pages on... Uh, they did their research on, on anime. Did you did you see any specific animes? I want to know if it was some fucking no, I, I'm sorry garbage. The, the plural of anime is just anime. Get it right. <laughs> Get it right, mom. From what I understand and what I can remember, it was like uh, the the intersectionality of anime and Japanese culture and how it relates to blah, 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 blah. You're not winning the scholarship. You did your research on anime. <laughs> that, that was like one where I was like, okay, phew dodged a bullet i didn't do my research on fucking anime because if there's one thing that the people at the fucking consulate are sick of seeing is like weeaboos like you don't roll up to the actual japanese consulate and be like konichiwa i love me some naruto <laughs> and expect <laughs> the young shin my dude konichiwa <laughs> and expect them to give you money like you're there to make them look good they don't want they don't want weebs running around with their Hachimaki headbands spouting off about fucking <laughs> Precure and Naruto. It's just, it's not going to work. I'm sure that Yaoi is a very in-depth subject that deserves lots of detailed research, but this is not the time, and this is not the place to do it. I plan on doing my college thesis on uh, how Yaoi relates to giant heads you, and enormous hands. You joke, but I'm sure somebody has actually done that. I'm not even kidding. Like, like I could come up with a, an academic title for that now. Uh, mas- redefining masculinity: a study of art forms as they relate to the yaoi. As they relate to yaoi. I was just gonna call it yaoi yaoi days. It's good Joe joke. <laughs> Is that a JoJo reference? <laughs> Is that a fucking JoJo reference? I think the person who wrote the least besides me had about twenty pages, and the person Jesus. who wrote the most had like 40 so i'm feeling the pressure i was like oh i may have (laughs) underestimated what is required for this and they start giving me those side you know the side eye glances like oh i guess it's really only a competition between us four (laughs) when when and this is this is another freeze frame you know where it zooms in on i was gonna say this sounds like fucking max keeble's big move right 
So it's it's one of those freeze frames where it zooms in on the main character, Nate's face, and you're like, uh oh, when the door opens and in walks this Obama looking motherfucker. <laughs> the tallest like you know you know like those college diversity magazines that have like the really, <laughs> the really cool exactly. look Exact everybody knows those, right? This dude walks in and he's like, Oh, nice to meet you everybody. My name's Fancy Black Name, and I'm here for the for the Mex scholarship. I was thinking about getting this one, or maybe the Fulbright. And if, if I don't know if you know the Fulbright scholarship, but uh, the Fulbright scholarship is like, hey, here's he's the uh, the governor of of Mississippi, Fulbright scholarship award winner, and it, it, it's that sort of thing. It's like the <laughs> Big Daddy scholarship. You win a Fulbright, and you're basically set for life. So in walks this dude with a big ass folder of his research, looking articulate as hell, and he's cutting a dashing figure in his suit. Like the man looked presidential, and I was shitting myself. <laughs> Just, you know those fear sweats that you get when something bad oh, yeah. is gonna happen. I have them constantly. Con- yeah, <laughs> I got the fear sweats. Also, I was the only one besides him wearing a suit, so you had to compare me to him. <laughs> so. I mean, this will come up later, but I'm not exactly the tallest dude. I'm a solid 5'7". This dude was 6 foot, and he cut an impressive figure. And I was shitting myself. So we get into the, uh, we get into the test part, and the English is fine, thankfully. The Japanese, I found out, they changed it from the previous year, and it's written now. So you have to write the kanji, whereas before you didn't have to, and I didn't study for writing the kanji. <laughs> oh, shit. So I felt real bad. I came out of that shaken. Uh, then we go into the uh, into the interview part, and they grilled me. They grilled me hard. They were like, hey, <laughs> this research sounds dumb. Hasn't this been done before? Tell me exactly why you think this is worth doing. Like, why do you need to go to Japan? And I was like, uh, let me explain to you. <laughs> Homestuck. <laughs> and they silently nodded, took out a like, bunch of notes, hmm, and dismissed hmm, you. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. We'll, uh, we'll let you know. And, uh, that was the last I heard of them when, after I left. So the drive home was, it, w- it was a somber affair. <laughs> it, was not, it was not good. Like, my parents called me like, hey, how did it go? And I was like, it went. <laughs> They're like, do you think you got it? And I said, no. <laughs> Normally when I apply for these sorts of things, you know, like, you, you take a test. You're like, you know, it could have gone better, but I still think I did pretty good. I was like, nope. There goes that. <laughs> So I start my, ne- my next soul-crushing job as a translator, and uh, that one went belly up too because they, they decided they said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna uh, sign you up to be outside sales." And I was like, "Cool, that sounds fun," where I get to like talk Ooh. to people in Japanese and because they're a Japanese like car manufacturing company, blah blah blah. And then they get there and like, "Hey, remember how we said outside sales? Well, what we meant by outside sales was data entry." <laughs> I got I you like, good. <laughs> Like, really? Is this, is this happening? So I, I did that for, like, maybe three weeks, but they paid me an ungodly amount of money. Just piles of it. It was disgusting. <laughs> like, okay, if it's it's a year and a half later now, and if I hadn't taken a trip to Colorado, which we could talk about maybe if you want, and almost died, uh, <laughs> if I hadn't have taken a trip to Colorado and bought a new computer... I would still have like four thousand dollars left over. What from the, the fuck? Money that they paid what for. the fuck did you do? What did you do that was so important? Nothing. I did nothing. <laughs> Literally, you just got like, to speak. You just got to speak basic Japanese. My my immediate manager didn't want another data entry person, so he didn't want to train me to do data entry. I didn't want to do data entry, so I just translated documents and then had my direct supervisor who didn't really speak English, retranslate them because she didn't like the translations I did. <laughs> and so did you then, just skip the middleman, which is like, here you go. Just read, you just grab it from your to-go pile, just hand it to her. Yeah, basically. And they're like, and then they use them in uh, meetings. And I was like, that's not my translation. It has my name on it, but that's not my translation. It's wrong. <laughs> they're like, no, this better. And I'm like, mm, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with but this paycheck is really fat. <laughs> It was it was a disgusting amount of money that they were paying me, and I'm frankly surprised that I got the job to begin with. So I quit that, and I took a trip to Colorado, because I thought 
I, at that point, I was sort of depressed. I was like, I'm not going to Japan. It's not happening. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm going to take a vacation. And right, like, I think it was the day after or, like, the day before I actually quit that prompted me to quit was I got an email and they're like, hey, you won. <laughs> I was like, wait, really? Wait, after, like, how long? It, it takes forever. It was like, it was like a three month lag between the, the date of the, uh, of the examination and the results. And then they had, they send you to secondary, uh, screening. And you have to pass the secondary screening, and then they send you to a final screening with the target university. And if that comes back positive, they send you to a final screening, and then you know if you're going, like, two months before your leave date, which is really great. But uh, I took a trip to Colorado, and I almost died. I took a trip <laughs> to Colorado by myself, and I almost died. How did you almost die in Colorado? Well, okay, um, I like camping. I'm I'm a physically fit, active guy who is also think I know a, where this is going. a massive weeaboo. See, this is part of my character, which is, if you looked at me from the outside, you would not realize that I'm a disgusting weeaboo. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm This fit. is true. I got muscles. Like, I do, I do powerlifting now, and I was just getting into it at that point, so I like hiking and shit like that. So I decided I wanted to go to Colorado for the fresh mountain air <laughs> wink wink nudge nudge uh, <laughs> it, it's very smoky out in Colorado. I, 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 I think i think i'm picking up what you're putting down here right. they got a lot of they got a lot of pine trees me. and stuff i was i was a good little a good boy before going to colorado i'd never done any drug of any kind <laughs> but it's legal there so i was like oh you know i'll give it a shot see what the hype is about wasn't that great to be honest and I know tons of viewers will be like, what, man, dude, weed's great. I'm like, eh, eh. I don't think we have the dude LOL weed audience. No, they're going to come out now. <laughs> they, they, can, they can feel it when somebody's like, eh. They, they get a little a little notification on their phones that they have to bitch about weed being off. Awesome. Their phones that have a shattered screen because they fucking dropped it. Exactly. So I, I got out there and I was just solo hiking, which is a terrible idea. Like, In Colorado. The first rule of hiking is don't hike alone but I was there for a week by myself. <laughs> so um, what happened was some other people were at the campsite and they had uh, marijuana wax. And I'm not sure what they call that. Wax? Yeah, it's like Like wax. a fucking candle? Well, so it's like a distilled... Are they like the fucking bottle caps that are like full of soda that you chew on? No, you put it in a vaporizer and it gets you really Oh, so you vape, you vape too, bro? Yeah, bro. Vape niche, bro. <laughs> puffing, them, puffing them white cotton. Vape niche, bro. So, I had tickets. There's two times that I almost died. I bought yeah. tickets to go whitewater rafting, and I was smoking with these people because you know we're all we're all bros at this campsite now, because that's what marijuana enthusiasts are like, right? And uh, I realized, mm -hmm. and this is really stupid, and I feel I honestly feel really fucking dumb about doing this. And at, at I was like, the the thing is, what it the, it hit me later, so I. I took a couple of puffs on this pen and then i get in my car to go drive to uh <laughs> yeah through twisty <laughs> canyon highway with no guardrails <laughs> and uh this man won a scholarship yeah but see the thing is i've been clean I, I haven't done any any drug whatsoever for the last then since then <laughs> which is a year and a half ago like yeah because they're serious about that shit in japan like you will get your ass thrown in jail real fast but For uh, having the the marijuana it, sticks yeah it didn't it didn't hit me at all until halfway i was driving through and i realized that everything seemed to be playing in slow motion oh, oh that, i was like boy Jesus i need to pay Christ. attention real hard so i drove like 10 miles under the speed limit and was like 10 o'clock at two o'clock hands gripped and so i got <laughs> to the uh the whitewater rafting place and it was awkward because it was a bunch of families <laughs> it was like two families and me and the guides were looking at me like, dude, come on. And I'm like, I just want to go whitewater rafting. <laughs> and, and before the raft took off, there was a taco stand. <laughs> and I, was, I was like, I should buy some tacos beforehand. <laughs> and they were really good. They were really good tacos. <laughs> and the guides keep looking at me. I was like, hey, man, these tacos are really good. And they're like, yeah, they are good. <laughs> and they knew that I was high. And I knew that I was high. <laughs> But neither of us were willing to be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't go whitewater rafting. 
<laughs> I'm glad they prioritized safety. But well, what was funny is that it was absolutely unnecessary because I was literally the safest person there because the other guy paddling next to me was some French guy, and all he kept doing was yelling "amazing" in French over and over. And to be <laughs> honest, he might be he might have been high too. <laughs> What is amazing in French? I have no idea. I don't remember. <laughs> but he just kept yelling it. Like, he would not paddle or listen to the guide's instructions at all. He was just yelling, wow, this is amazing in French a lot. <laughs> Qui a coupé le fromage? Omelette du fromage. Like, whispering it in my ear, essentially. So I got back from that. And, I mean, I could have died in the canyon. For sure, driving my car. Definitely could have died. But the real time that I could have died, and I posted about this on Facebook, and I think you probably saw it, was I went solo hiking, and the weather changes real fast in Colorado. Like, like Yeah, because you're fast. up in the high elevation. Yeah, it can, be, uh, it can be sunny and nice in the morning and then just rain out at night. So <laughs> it's got two personalities. <laughs> nicest guy you ever meet and twisted fucking psychopath. Yeah, Colorado can be your angel or your devil, baby. <laughs> God damn it. These, are, these are the jokes people so i went out hiking on this trail and it was supposed to be a trail to a lake and i thought hey that'd be cool and uh, i didn't have an altimeter with me but i did have uh, like solar panels and all sorts of cool hiking shit plenty of water food all that but it doesn't really matter because i hiked i probably i want to say like two hours up And I got to a point where it's an entrance gate into, hey, we don't patrol this area. And I was like, that's fine. The lake is supposed to be really close to here. (laughs) How do I get to the lake? The lake. It it was summer, so I was like, it's plenty warm. And I have, like, a jacket if it gets cold. And uh, so I kept hiking. And I was like, hey, this is neat. There's snow on the ground up here. (laughs) Because I was really high up, like... Uh, I looked later at where I was, and it was about 12,000 feet. So it's hard to breathe up there, especially if you're not, like, uh, acclimatized, which at that point I probably was a little bit. But so I'm like, hey, where's this lake? It's been a long time. And I looked, and I've been hiking up for about two and a half hours, which means hiking out takes another two and a half hours because it's not a looped trail. And then uh, there's a pause and a record scratch and another freeze frame. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. Where the sky gets cloudy and it uh, it starts raining. Like, that's bad. I, I'm going to go back now. And then it goes crash and lightning strikes very close <laughs> to where I am. And I'm like, oh, that's my signal to start leaving quickly. So I start uh, doing the white guy fast walk down the mountain. <laughs> you know, the, 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 uh, the worried shuffle. Because the last, <laughs> the, it, it, there's some minorities in this neighborhood, and I'm gonna quickly walk on the other side of the, the street. The, there's an articulate black man about to take my scholarship, and I must go quickly. <laughs> uh, because it became clear to me too that twisting an ankle at twelve thousand feet when no one knows where I am is probably also a bad idea. <laughs> it's a fucking death sentence. You're you're actually not supposed to do any of the things that I did solo hiking. And I really hope my parents don't listen to this, because (laughs) I came really close to being trapped on a mountain in a thunderstorm with no cell phone coverage alone. So I'm I'm hiking quickly, quickly down, you know, like the Spongebob, it's it's time to start running. (laughs) It was that scene playing out in my head. And so I did what any reasonable person would do, is I took out my phone and I started videotaping. And, uh... (laughs) I, I took a video, and I was like, hey, uh, this is me. It's at 12,000 feet, and if uh, if this is the last thing you see of me, somebody delete my uh, internet search history. <laughs> and I uploaded that to Facebook when I got data. <laughs> I was still on the mountain. Like, I could have definitely still died where I was, but it was important that that get out. And ravioli, pe- ravioli, give me the four of you only. Luckily, His I, last words. I made it to my car. And I just kind of sat in there with the AC on. And I was like, well, <laughs> we're never doing that again. And then I left Colorado. <laughs> get the fuck out before it could get you again. Right? That was my trip to Colorado. And uh, after that, I started my... Well, I had to look for another new job after the money 
the money was run, running a little dry. It turns out when uh, when you have a scholarship and you're saying like, hey, I'm going to leave to go to Japan in April of next year, people are less <laughs> likely to hire you. <laughs> like a lot less likely, it turns out. And I like to be honest with people and be like, hey, you know, this is this is the deal. Here's here's what's going on. And they're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we'll call you. And then they don't call <laughs> until I finally got to a place. And it should have been a warning sign, I guess, that they were willing to hire me. And they didn't ask where I would be in a year. It was a moving company, a Japanese moving company, where they take people who are moving from Japan to the United States or vice versa and pack their shit up. So uh, I, I was doing translation and heavy lifting for them. And they didn't ask. That's kind of an odd combination of two things. Well, so This is starting to sound like some fucking goon work. It was goon work, 100%. <laughs> like you're working for the fucking penguin or something. Like... Man, if I had a uniform, for sure. Oh my god, you would have you would have totally been like a Bond villain goon. You would have been transporting illicit materials or something. Oh, we did transport illicit materials. That's the that's the story here. Oh boy, <laughs> is I had to call the EPA on my first week. <laughs> they made me I had do to it. do that at work. We um they spilled like forty seven gallons of uh of uh, diesel oil when you have to call the EPA after seven. And instead of having us call them, my boss literally went to Walmart and bought 27 pound, like 75 pound bags of kitty litter and like just fucking covered the entire back lot. You can't do that. It was literally, it was a foot deep. A um, foot diesel. <laughs> a foot deep. Uh, that's pretty good. Oh, uh, they filled up the garbage can with, uh, the, with the oiled like clay and they couldn't take it because it would start a fire. It yeah. was pretty great. We had to put them in uh, garbage bags and slowly dry them out over the rest of the summer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's all kinds of illegal. Oh, for sure. No, uh, what happened for me was, I mean, in the interview, they did not ask. They didn't ask where I was going to be, so I didn't tell them. It was like the gay army. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> they didn't ask if I was going to be here in a year, and I didn't tell them that no, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> so I got hired, and one of the first things that I found out was one of my coworkers was homeless and living at the at the uh, at the office. Huh? Yeah, just, that's... He, he's a really cool guy, kind of. Uh, I mean, he, that's nice of them to allow that, but it's oh, like they hold didn't on a really second. allow it so much as they didn't ah. turn him in <laughs> because he's the only one working there who knew how to do anything. Because <laughs> they bring like new Japanese workers over who are just like, hey, this is your job now. And they don't know how to pack anything. They don't know how to, like, load things in an efficient manner. So he's the only guy who'd been there for, like, 20 years and knew what he was doing. So he was like, I need to stay here for a few weeks. And they were like, please don't quit. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he was a cool guy. Other than his, like, weird drinking habits. And, like, <laughs> yeah. So uh, they, they taught me the job, which was basically lift heavy thing, put box in car, and, uh, talk to Japanese people, which was nice. I mean, I liked the job a lot better than my boring office job before. It paid, like, really poorly. It wasn't good. But mm -hmm. it was enough to get me through to, to get to Japan, and that was how I was able to do it. It was just, like, hunker down and realize that the bad times will end soon. And, uh, what happened was we went to a, uh, we went to somebody's house, and, uh, we were unloading their bed from Japan, mm -hmm. and they pack their stuff up themselves, and they're supposed to check everything. But a lot of these Japanese salarymen do not exactly have what we could call hygiene. Ooh. They live at the office, and they don't clean when they get home. And their houses are very, very gross. And so we open up this thing and out-tumble all these little bugs. Oh. And uh, we're like, whoa, 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 we're not going to do this. This is bad. we gotta, we got to see what these are. Oh, they're bed bugs. <laughs> oh, they're Japanese bed bugs that are on a list that says, hey, you can't bring these into the country. It's a big, big deal if you bring these into the country. And our manager is like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Just, <laughs> we're, we're just, we, eh, eh, it's not our problem. And I was like, no, 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 this is, this is a problem. I can't be doing this. And my <laughs> other coworker's like, I'm not touching it. Nope, nope, won't touch the bed, won't bring it into the house, won't bring it out of the house. You need to talk to the customers. So I was like, uh, okay. So they tell me, hey, uh, hey, did I? You need to. None of us speak good enough English, and you're you're an articulate, college-educated young man. You call mm -hmm. the EPA and tell them what's up. <laughs> so here I am, sitting my first week on the job, 
on the phone to the EPA for a company whose name I barely have memorized. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, is there anyone at the EPA that I could talk to? We have to report a bed bug infestation. And they're like, we'll call you back. They didn't call us back. They were like, hey, just you know, get everything sterilized and clean. And so we couldn't use the truck for a week. And we had to tell the customer that you can't bring bed bugs into the United States. As it, and that you might want to buy a new bed, and I don't think they did. I think they just kept living with bed bugs in their house. Oh, God. Yeah, it was gross. It, it, it was real gross. And uh, during this whole time, I've been on uh, 4chan reading an, a brand new manga. Well, it's not brand new. It was newish to me. I'd been following it, but it's called uh, Monster Musume. Ah, yes. You're supposed I've to react this. to that. Because it's all I fucking talk about. And uh, <laughs> It's your homestuck. It's not really my homestuck because it's not terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, interesting. The threads are just the shit. That's for sure. <laughs> so I've been following this, talking to people online about it, because you know I speak Japanese, and at this point I got onto uh, Japanese Twitter, made my own little, my own little handle. Shoutouts to at pulpfan69. Yeah, hey, I'll go ahead Twitter. and plug that in your fuck. I'll plug it in the description if you give me one more Japanese tweet token. You got it. This is the currency between us. <laughs> I do you a favor, you give me a tweet token. Yeah, I, I tweet ridiculous things for him in Japanese because that's obviously worth something. <laughs> so it's worth a mention in the description of a podcast. I've been following that uh, that that manga for a while. This is while I was working at this terrible job, so basically just killing time and reading it on my phone while I sleep in packing containers on the job because there's nothing to do like when there's no houses to move they they just pay us for being there and they're like you need to clean up and they're like this is a warehouse it's never clean so we push the mop around for a little bit dust and then I go sleep in a packing container <laughs> we had old the thing is the cool thing was is it wasn't just like on cardboard because we had old furniture and stuff around so you, you take like a couch you take some, some gross blankets and you uh, build, <laughs> build yourself an adult pillow fort in the back and sleep in a packing container and read Monster Musume on your phone. <laughs> and get paid to do it, by the way. I was literally getting paid to shitpost on 4chan. That's basically what I was doing at Road Ranger for the final few weeks. It's living the dream. It was. And then I got fired for uh, making a dick joke. <laughs> That's the best way I, to go out. Like, honestly, real talk, if I had to choose a way to get fired from a job, it's that. I mean, is like, I made a poorly timed way? dick joke. Is it? Can it really be poorly timed if you got fired for it? Isn't that, like, the best timing? That's true. Like, that's maximum impact. That was the job where I technically wore a fursuit, too. <laughs> I've not heard this story. I think I told it in Noise Boys, too. But uh, my boss had a giant cookie monster outfit. And I'm like, oh, shit, let me get in on that. And I put it on. I came to the realization, this is just a fursuit. No, Cookie Monster is a specific fetish, though. It's different. <laughs> I'm Cookie Kin. Yeah, I'm in Devor. Please don't. <laughs> Munch me, Daddy. <laughs> God. Don't, don't do this. <laughs> I don't need these images in my mind. I've been a naughty chocolate chip. <laughs> <laughs> my cookie dough is only half baked. <laughs> I'll be your sugar cookie if you be my sugar daddy. God damn right, it. Let's stop. Let's stop. <laughs> I think we were That's talking just about how the monster cookie crumbles. Girls. God fucking damn it. <laughs> we're talking about monster girls now, okay? This is less degenerate. So <laughs> Furry I st cookie monster. I started the, the Twitter, uh, my Twitter account sort of as a joke just because, like, I found out that the author is on Twitter, and holy shit, that's kind of cool. Like, you know, you could tweet at him and, like, ask questions and stuff. It's like, wow, that's kind of cool. And th the neat thing is, this guy is awesome. We call him Crab Man, but he, his uh, his Twitter handle is Okayado, which is just Hermit Crab, because he's a shy boy. <laughs> he All he does is, like, he makes this ridiculous fetish manga to pander to fans as hard as he possibly can. Like, he Living just... the dream. Exactly. No, he started... The, the, the comic started off as a series of porn comics, and somehow got picked up for serialization and no one has realized that it's just it's just fetish bait and it's fantastic i mean there is story to it now but that's not how it started so i i tweeted some questions at him about my favorite character 
and he answered them, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And then I told 4chan that he answered them, and they're like, dude, stop, you can't, you can't have him come here. <laughs> you can't defile this place. Like, you can't, you can't let him be defiled by this place. So, around that time, uh, I, I, uh, I found out through those threads that the, the translator was really sick of the series. Like, they just weren't into it anymore. They didn't want to keep doing it. And this is when my time at that, at that, uh, packing place was winding down, because I was gearing up to move to Japan. And I was like, well, I like translating. I could do it. And they're like, yeah, whatever, we really don't want to do this anymore. You, you got it. So that's how... <laughs> It's not an interesting story how I became the translator. Like, I didn't go through any hoops or, like, prove myself other than not being retarded in Japanese. They're just and like, this is, and just to clarify, this is, you know, an unofficial fan translation. Yeah, this is, this is an unofficial fan translation. The official translation is done by Seven Seas, and if you want to support the manga, I highly recommend you buy their translation. Um, if there's anybody from Seven Seas listening, which they're probably not, there are many things that I disagree with them about, but their demographics are different, so it, it's kind of hard to nitpick when you get into that. There are some mm-hmm. things I think they're wrong about, but at, at the same time, they're translating for a much broader audience. So, it Some of the changes that they make might be geared towards that. Yeah, they, they add a lot more puns, and I can't forgive them for it. Uh. Ugh, puns. But uh, yeah, so I, I do the unofficial fan translation, which is up on all the, like, the manga sites. But... Uh, once I started doing that, I found out, and this is this is where the dream comes in, living it. Uh, my favorite character is Pult, the Kobold, because she is a fitness instructor and works at a gym and is ganky tomboy, and that's like the toppest of top tiers. Ah, and, I hurt my eyes. I rolled them a little bit too hard. See, well, okay, now this is where you get to say some bullshit about Homestuck to make up for it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking I refuse to say anything. Exactly. See, I will keep myself clear. Right. I get to say, hey, you know, Genki tomboys are the best ever, with without a to- without a hint of hypocrisy or irony. I mean that one hundred percent unironically. It's the best, and I'm giving you the opportunity to say something about Homestuck. <laughs> Caliborn is my sweet baby child, and I would <laughs> cherish him. Lovely. So, the the character at the time when I when I started, the character had come had shown up like I think once or twice, and uh, I kind of went all in on Twitter. I was like, "This is the, my favorite character. She's the absolute best. A pure cinnamon roll who is too good for this vile world." And it turns out like uh, they're doing a he was doing like a contest where hey fans of the series you can uh, you can show up in the manga, and I was like, "That's me." This is me. This is my time to shine. <laughs> and I was like the last person to make the cutoff. He was like, we're not really doing this anymore. So what I did was I took, obviously, I took a gym selfie of myself flexing. And <laughs> I sent that in and he's like, dude, you're buff. I was like, thank you. You, you, you too. Whoa, Scoob. Or <laughs> whoa, Shaggy. I'm buff. <laughs> Fuck, I forget how it goes. Buff Shaggy. Or buff Shaggy RP. Buff, buff Riku. Buff Riku is where it's at. <laughs> That's me, IRL. So I took this picture, and I really didn't expect anything of it. And I was like, please, please, please put me in the manga with Pult. And he's like... Like when we uh, were trying to get to the Overwatch beta, and you said a bunch... You just started talking about the, the talking about anime with the support. Yeah, I got I threatened on... to tell the support team about Homestuck until he gave me a beta key. I got on support, and I was like, hey man, what's your favorite anime? And he's like... Oh man, I forget what he said, but we talked about anime for like 10 minutes, and I was like, can you get me an Overwatch beta key? And he was like, no. <laughs> Can't do it. I tried I tried to sweeten the deal, and he just he wasn't fighting. So, <laughs> I didn't learn about uh, making it into the, into the manga until well after I moved to Japan. So, I had translated a few chapters, and the character that I liked started showing up more. And I was like, huh that's cool. I bet it doesn't have anything to do with me. And then he gave an interview and he's like, there's some guy on Twitter who really likes Pult. And I was like, huh, I guess she's an all right character. I'll add her in more. <laughs> and, and 4chan got real upset at me. <laughs> like, hey, you piece of shit. Stop having characters that you like. Stop being an up, upbeat and fun person to be around, you asshole. They're like, they, they accused me of bullying him. Of like, 
moving to Japan specifically to track him down and force him <laughs> to add my favorite character into the manga, and they're not wrong. <laughs> it was all part of the plan. My Keikaku was completely 100% Doi. Sure, why not? I mean, that's how it happened. 100%. It's not like I was just talking to the guy and having fun, translating questions for fans, being a nice person. Being a goofster. Just, just having a few laughs. A few laughs with some friends, some bros, being degenerate, <laughs> talking about Monster Girls, you know. So Oil. I moved to Japan after all of the ridiculous uh, next stuff living in a tiny apartment and I woke up one morning uh, the day that the new chapter is coming out to see my face plastered in a Japanese magazine like zoomed in and uh, that was probably the most surreal moment of my entire life <laughs> because I had to I had to walk to the store to go buy the magazine realizing that I that I look like the guy in the magazine because it is me literally me literally me so now whenever there's threads on 4chan about like hey uh post anime care post anime and manga characters that are literally you i just post my own face with a shitty and grin because <laughs> it's literally me you guys no i i it was weird because i was on twitter i was like does this mean that whenever i go outside i'm technically doing cosplay <laughs> and they're like wait yeah shit that does mean you're doing cosplay <laughs> and then uh it's weird because I'm holding the manga right now. Like, it, they come out in magazines to begin with, and then the chapters get collected into um, into volumes. And that's how most people buy them. And Monster Musume is a New York Times bestseller. Jesus. For manga, yeah. New York Times bestseller. And if you open up volume... Uh, should be volume 12. Yeah. Volume 12, uh, chapter 43... The, the the first the first pages of where they show up at the gym, there's a guy with a beard and a comb over because my hair is going away, looking very stern, and that's me, and it's very very odd, like <laughs> it, it's just it's, weird. It's something that shouldn't happen. This it's, is part of my theory about the Berenstein Berenstain universe. We crossover. have definitely moved from the Steen universe into the Stain universe. There's no We've doubt moved about it. From the it. control group. We are no. We are under. We're undergoing testing. We, we passed through the low probability bottleneck to where anything can happen. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a like a wackier example that happened more recently, but uh, you know, Trump I mean, winning I'm, the I'm election. Dr- <laughs> that's. I mean, that was the joke. That's that's the wackiest thing. Oh, uh, the South Korean government being found being out run to be by run droids. by a literal, a literal cult, of like. <laughs> like weird religious cult that got overthrown like that shouldn't happen but there here I mean, we that's are pretty that's true about pretty much uh most major governments that shouldn't happen <laughs> <laughs> hey don't do that <laughs> but uh i mean it, it it was very odd because it also put me in the weird position of translating my own dialogue because for that chapter i have some lines and they're in Japanese, written by somebody else, and I have to translate them back into English. And I'm like, wait, so do I change this to what he wrote, or do I or keep what you would like say. what I would say? Because it's me talking, but it's not me because it's two dimensional me. And uh, this is some like African voodoo shit. Well, basically, what I've decided is that it's an alternate universe version of me who has ascended to a better reality. <laughs> one missing a dimension well, yeah, like gaining a whole <laughs> gaining a meaning to life we've we've we're all trapped in this 3d prison this 3d fucking meat prison it's a nightmare a never-ending nightmare i just want to fucking get home after going to my cyber job fucking slide in my homestuck vid sim into my fucking data jack and just fucking sit there i mean that's what i want that sounds like what i want except replace all of those things with with touch fluffy tail <laughs> you know different strokes for different folks yes stroke the tail as well okay yeah i mean i kind of fed you that one that, i should have seen the, it coming yeah, that was free so i ended what i ended up doing was i kept the dialogue the same but i just made him say bra and bro a lot <laughs> what's what's even weirder is if they end up doing a season two of the anime for it will i get oh, to no. voice my own lines this is the question 
Because oh, then I would dude. be like, as of right now, I think, and if anyone else knows, I think I'm the only person from A who has ever ascended from a lowly meat person into the glorious 2D realm and become an actual canon character in a manga. And I would he, say as a full-blown character? Probably. Like, references, I'm sure those have been dropped. I've shown up twice now. <gasps> I had a second cameo. In, Wait, in when? The, in the background of one of the latest chapters that uh, they're at an expo and there's a bunch of dudes from the gym like working out in the background and uh, I'm one of those dudes <laughs> working out in the background getting my pump on. You know. Nice. But, uh, nice. The, the, there's a lot of people on 4chan who are very upset about this. <laughs> As they should. What's, what's really funny is like 4chan was a mix of Hey, fuck you, asshole, and hey, that's pretty good. And <laughs> Japanese Twitter was just like, I love you, man. That's awesome. So cool. Great. Happy birthday. Amazing for you. I was like, wow, <laughs> Japanese Twitter is way nicer than 4chan. <laughs> Some guy for my birthday literally sent me out of nowhere a DM, and he's like, hey, man, I got you a present. Can you, like, give me your home address? And I was like, yes? I mean, just so you're aware, doesn't Japan have, like, crazy serial killers? Yeah, I mean, that went through my mind. I was like, this could be a crazy serial killer. But then I remembered I have some muscles, so I was like, I'll just punch <laughs> him. I'll just punch him real hard. <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> what I did was I gave him my address, but I kept One my, door over. I didn't give him my real name. I mm -hmm. put it down as Pulp Fan. Which was unfortunate because the mailman came to my door and was like, does a Mr. Pulp fan live here? <laughs> and I had to answer in the affirmative. <laughs> it's like, yes, unfortunately, that's me. <laughs> this is a Mr. Pulp fan 69. <laughs> I really regret choosing those numbers. <laughs> yes, I picked them on purpose. I regret doing so. It's just like the URL of this podcast. I kind of fucked up. Too late to change it now. It's like the story of my life. Kind of fucked up, but it's too late to change it now. <laughs> you gotta roll with it, man. Like, Japanese is a worthless, a worthless language to study right now. It's just like you, you learned it just to, like, translate pornography. Not and pornography. Watch, like, in little particular. girls' cartoons. Not, not in particular, but yes. I learned it, <laughs> I learned it because I really do like the language. Like, it's a fun language to learn. Like, kanji is really cool. Language sounds really cool. But, in terms of, like, uh, future use... Practicality. Eh, it's not so good. You like, really... German is a language like that, where it's just real fun to say. Yeah. I mean, you can you can say happy birthday to somebody in German, and it sounds like you're cursing them for a thousand years. Yeah. Or words like worm coil machine. That's just fun to say. That's really cool. I don't know what that is. It's worm coil engine. A six cost, uh, colorless, six six death touch lifelink worm from Magic the Gathering and Mirrored in Besiege. When it dies, you get a three three lifelink. Feel free to cut me off at any fucking time, <laughs> dude. I was just going to see how long you were going to go with that. I mean, Bitch, I remember the entire card because I love it. It's the Caliborn of Magic the Gathering. Must you? Must you work if I, do, if I go 30 minutes without talking about Homestuck, I will die. I see that if I go 30 minutes without thinking about fluffy tails and animal ear girls, I will die. <laughs> We're not so different, you and I. It, it's really funny because I go out like and walk around in Japan a lot, and I get stopped by the cops because I'm white and I look imposing, apparently. I've been stopped like six times, and they try to search my bag, and I tell them, sorry, you need a warrant for that, and they really don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, what do they do? Do they arrest you for being white? No, you just have to show them your your uh, your gaijin card, and like, hey, I live here. I'm not like ah, just like drugs. my favorite YouTube personality, gaijin goomba. God no, please, fucking kill me. I'm I'm like the polar opposite of that guy. <laughs> I don't there, know. He made a pretty good music video. There's two distinct classes of weebus. Okay, there's there's those of us who walk in the shadows. And then there's the, oh god, here they come kind of weeaboo. <laughs> the ones wearing a glomp me shirt. Yeah. So those of us who walk in the shadows, like myself, we don't let you know <laughs> that we're horrific degenerates. Like, I could be walking around outside in Japan and you'd be like, there goes a tourist with a beard. You would not be able He's to... He's probably going to eat some sushi or something. Yeah. You would not be able to pick me out of a line of people and be like, him, that's the degenerate. But you'd be wrong. <laughs> 
<laughs> you would be oh so wrong. It's really funny because like I hunt, I've gotten noticed. With, that's another thing is I got noticed by like uh, I was going to some event for uh, for Spice and Wolf, which is another uh, series that I really like, and I was going out to an event to buy some uh, some of the new books and stuff. And somebody was like tapped me from behind and was like, "Are you Pulp fan?" And I was like, "Oh God, I am." They didn't say Pulp fan sixty nine. No, they. Thank God they don't add the sixty nine. <laughs> But he tapped me and was like, "Are you, are you pulp fan?" And I was like, "Fuck, I am, aren't I?" <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, "Yes, that's me. You noticed me from the internet, I presume." He's like, "I follow you on Twitter." And I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> oh no, I don't know how to interact with these people." He was a really cool guy though. Like we hung out, talked about Spice and Wolf, talked about Monster Musume, and uh, went like hunting for degenerate anime merch in Akihabara. And it was really cool, but it was really awkward meeting him at the, at the beginning because I never thought I would be one of those people who who would get noticed in public. Yeah, like 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 I I don't ever expect to be noticed for hosting a shitty podcast on YouTube anytime soon. It's just not so I imagine it'd be the same like ho- whoa what? Yeah, like the same thing happened when I went to Comic Con, like the big uh, comic convention over here. Like I went wearing my my tank top i've got like a sports club cobalt which is the name of the gym tank top that i wear and i wore that and people were like i was scrolling through twitter during the event because they keep news up and people were like i saw pulp fan walking around and i'm like looking over my shoulder for these people because they wouldn't come up and talk to me because they were too shy but now i know <laughs> they were too watching. scared like, there were people <laughs> watching me and i didn't know who they were they're in the trees they're, they're crafty they're sneaky <laughs> Get how do you, you think they won the korean war that's how they did it <laughs> japanese are crafty you got to keep your eye on them they'll vibrate through the walls <laughs> when you're not looking they can shake their molecules you ever heard of radical larry <laughs> that's what i was talking about <laughs> i was thinking of radical larry well actually the child <laughs> i was about to make a racist joke let's just skip it Skip. Well, skip I'm gonna say it anyway, radical Rary. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I do I do that sort of shit all the time with some of my Japanese friends because they're like, we want to learn English, and I was like, okay, say the word rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> they can't fucking do it. Please, so please reenact for me how they say rocket launcher. D- rocket launcher. Ra- 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 they can't do it because it's the R's and the L's. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's no distinction between R and L in Japanese. They just have one sound that's in between both of them. So if you try to tell them to say something like jewelry, oh, jewelry and rocket launcher. If you ever want to piss off a Japanese person, <laughs> but at, at the same time, Americans and uh, people who speak English as their native language generally can't speak Japanese for shit. Dude, English is a is a bullshit language. Well, if I was not born and language. if I was not born in Trump's America, like th- I there's no fuck away I'd speak English, dude. I would be so fucked. Oh, I don't even I don't even remember what a fucking synonym is. Synonym is two words that I'm going to get this wrong and sound like a dick. I'm not going to say it. I, I don't have 100% confidence as to what a synonym is. Synonyms are like words, words that, are that sound the same. Meaning. It's it's either sound the same and have different meanings or have or sound different and have the same meaning. Something yeah, like, like the, the, the fuck is a gerund? Get out of here. I'm going to look that up now because I feel like an asshole. Synonym. A word or phrase that means exactly or nearly the same as another word or phrase in the same language. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but my point is English is a bullshit fucking amalgam of a whole bunch of languages. Oh, yeah. And I, I, am, I feel bad for anyone who has to learn it. I feel bad for anyone who has to learn English. Like, it's stupid. English is a dumb language. The The hardest thing about Jap- about learning Japanese is kanji. Like, that's it. Once you get past... For English, you have... who boy, there's a lot of rules. Well, and the rules all have, like... Uh, they all have exceptions. Like, there's tons mm-hmm. of, tons of exceptions to rules in English. Japanese, like, if you get Japanese grammar structure wrong, no one knows what the hell you're saying. And they'll have to be like, huh? Like, what are you talking about? If you get yeah, for English, you can kind of fuck up the grammar, and people generally get what you're trying to say. Which is at least which you would think is like, oh, English is more forgiving, but it also means that you can't get better. <laughs> like, there's no hard feedback system for English that makes you stop fucking up. In Japanese, if you fuck up, 
parts of the sentence, you'll say things like, instead of, uh, I fed vegetables to the kids, you'll be like, I fed the kids to the vegetables. <laughs> Hardcore. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you just fucking seed in the garden. Right? Jesus. Like, they're buried They'll behind the shed. <laughs> The hardest thing about J- Japanese is the kanji. Like once you get past the the first grammar hump, it's it becomes a lot easier. It builds off of itself. Like uh, all the verb forms are really really easy for Japanese. Well, you never have to worry about how to conjugate a verb because once you know how they conjugate, you learn a new verb. You know how to conjugate it. It's easy. English is stupid. Trying to teach people like no, it's not run. It's ran. <laughs> like. It's not, I mean, German has he threw it the has ball, but the ball words. was thrown. Try to explain that oh. to somebody. Or through, through, and through. Yeah, fuck that. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, German has gendered uh, stuff. That's the most complicated thing about it. Is just remembering der, d, das. You know, feminine, masculine, or feminine, masculine, and like neutral. No, no. And just like there's only trying two to figure genders. out what the fuck. <laughs> no, no, we're not having any of this SJW stuff here. Hey. <laughs> German's the most cucked language. It's the most cucked country. Can't say that. Ooh. Can't say that. <laughs> How PC is this podcast? Uh, well, I mean, if you shorten podcast down, it's PC. Oh fuck! You're right. N- nani. Nani. I don't. I know what nani means. I don't know what masika or yamaro means. <laughs> Yama, y- yamaro. Yamaro. Yamaro is like stop. Like, quit it. Cut it out. Uh, Masaka is like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Yamaro. Yamaro. He's like, stop it. it. It's the command form of Yamaro, which is like, quit. <laughs> All right, but that's how you swoosed your way. Swoosed fucking, fucking focused attack dash canceled into being drawn into a manga. Yeah, which is, the I guess, the, the best thing to end it on is in 4chan. Right now, I'm the only trip fag you could talk about without while still being on topic. <laughs> you're allowed to circle jerk about me and it's not considered off topic posting because i'm a canonical a canonical is that how you say it? uh you you exist in the second dimension yeah i exist in the second dimension so i could be like hey guys here's what i did today <laughs> i could blog <laughs> post i don't you do could that. just straight up shit post with just the biggest grief because they can't do anything about it can't touch me except they can't because they could just fucking we did it reddit they could just derail the whole threat i guess Oh, man, the differences between posting on 4chan and Reddit are so, 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 so different. Like, I, oh, I post yeah. almost it's, exclusively it's... on 4chan because everyone's an asshole, and I prefer that. Mm-hmm. Dude, brutal honesty mixed with bullshit. Yeah, I'd rather, rather everyone was like Bullshit a mixed me. with bullshit. I would, I would really rather everyone was an asshole to me just because it's funnier. And, like, when, I, when people are like, hey, man, thanks, on 4chan, I know they mean it because you don't get fake internet points for being nice. I, the one time, like, the second time that I've posted on Reddit was just for, like, hey, this translation had some corrections. I want you guys to have the right stuff. They, like, immediately started sucking my dick. <laughs> and I was like, please, please don't do this. They're like, this this, this fandom, like, revolves around the work you do. And I'm like, please, no, I translate Gee, it. I don't oh my write God. it, man. Like, the I, word fandom? Uh, oh, that actually, I think that might actually be what a trigger word is. It triggers me. It's, I'm getting... I'm getting sweaty. Like I like. The I'm gonna series. start screaming about Homestuck. <laughs> I'm not. We a better part shut of this down now. Fan. So I, I basically it comes down to don't suck my dick. <laughs> don't suck my dick, dog. I just trans. Okay, hold on. One question before we end this: How many dicks can Mia fit in her mouth? Fuck off. She has a distendable jaw. <laughs> that is distendable jaw, you piece of shit. Her upper half is human. Okay, it doesn't work this way. Yeah, but she's got scales and she's got a snake tongue. Stop triggering me. <laughs> It's like the damn people are like, I don't understand. Polt is a kobold, but they're dog people, so why can they sweat? It doesn't work that way, okay? It's a fictional universe. Stop triggering me.